Welcome to my channel. Today I'll show you how I created another one of my sculptures. To craft it, I'm using grocked porcelain clay. As a mold for the sculpture, I'm using a regular deep bowl of the size I need. After lining the base with plastic, I begin shaping the texture. I base my texture on roughly twisted coils and pre-made plaster molds with ornaments. The essence of the technique lies in having a plaster mold with a concave relief into which you press a small piece of clay. Then use another piece of clay to extract the resulting pattern. In a random sequence I lay down the coils, alternating them with patterns and textures, layer by layer. Once the foundation is done, it's necessary to reinforce the areas where the two hemispheres will be connected. This can be easily achieved by adding an additional clay coil around the circumference. After one hemisphere has slightly hardened, but it's not entirely dry, as we'll need to work with it more, I remove it from the mold and repeat the process to create the second part of the future sculpture. My sculpture is intended to have a cylindrical hole in the center. To achieve this, I need to make a cylinder with the same texture as the main mass. In this case, a piece of plastic pipe serves as a mold wrapped several times with newspaper to aid in extracting the ceiling. So all the sculpture's parts are ready, in a rather hard state and ready for assembly. Leaving one hemisphere in the mold for added stability, I join the two parts together using sleep. Now I need to cut an opening to insert my cylinder. After the first half is cut, I can see some weak points inside the form and correct them. I adjust the opening to the desired size, do a fitting and prepare for the assembly.
to securely join two leather hard pieces, you need to work on the joining areas. This involves scoring and applying slip to both joining surfaces. After leaving the edges of the cylinder, I connect the two parts. To fit the cylinder's thickness into the opening, I had to shave some clay from the cylinder wall using a tool called a shredder.
Now that the cylinder is inside, I join both parts together and only then trim the top. After that, I work on smoothing the seam, carefully blending it around the entire circumference. You can use a wooden tool to soften any sharp or uneven edges. This tool helps even out obvious bumps and irregularities in the joining areas. Next, you can remove the entire piece from the mold and continue refining the texture. For flat surfaces, I use a flat wooden stick. You might notice that the shape is not very symmetrical at this point and has a sharp 
angle where the two spheres and the cylinder meet. With a bit of taping you can easily achieve an almost perfect shape, as you can see in the video. The final stage in creating the sculpture is working on the details. As you may have noticed earlier, the texture is missing where the two spheres and the cylinder join, which significantly affects the sculpture's perception, its appearance and completeness. Therefore, I apply the texture to these areas manually. At this point, the sculpture is still slightly damp and holds its shape well, but it hasn't fully dried, which allows me to work on the surface. Texturing is a meticulous and time-consuming process, it's best to protect the sculpture from fuzzy drying during breaks. To do this, place a piece of dumb but not wet fabric in the areas you are not currently working on. If the decoration process takes several days, cover the entire sculpture with dumb but well-squeezed fabric and a layer of plastic. Only when you finished working on a piece, you can let it dry. In my case, since the walls are not uniform and some areas are quite thin, I'll have to dry it very slowly. For this, I choose a less heated spot in the studio and lightly cover it with plastic, leaving room for air. While the main part of the sculpture is drying, I work on the base. I've created two part base with the top made on a portrait wheel and the bottom using slabs. I don't plan to glaze the sculpture, as it serves a decorative function and I want to maintain its clean white color. Since it's porcelain clay, it was bisque fired at a high temperature, specifically 1240 degrees of Celsius. 